Hi, welcome to the Little Beaver Railroad. As we highball through the layout, let me tell you a bit about it. The Little Beaver is my HO scale model railroad. It was named after my father's hobby shop, Beaver Hobby, which was situated in the basement of Waterloo Square during the late 60s and early 70s. That's where I was first introduced to model railroading and is where I fell in love with and bought my first brass locomotive, a West Side No. 4 Shea. The theme of my layout is a fictional, small, family-run logging business in the northern Canadian outback. Set in the late 30s, the Little Beaver serves the logging and mining industries, as well as some local spin-off companies. Apparently, the company purchased most of its locals and rolling stock in used condition from other larger railways of the time, so it sports the original owner's logos until it gets repainted. In addition to Shea No. 2, a newer acquisition is their 50-ton Climax No. 3. It was a demo unit from Climax Locomotive Company, and the LBR got it at a very good price. I chose HO Scale over HON3 because of the availability of so much more in rolling stock, locomotives, and track products. The layout is a folded dog bone design with reversing loops on both ends. I designed it myself using SCARM software. I'm running DCC with sound. The layout is actually a series of individual tables joined together. Each is a simple wooden frame of 1x3s covered with 2 inch sheets of insulating foam. Using just the foam as the surface makes it easy to put holes in it and shape the scenery. Just don't try and stand on it. All of my mainline turnouts are powered and the yards and spurs are manual switches. I built the turnout control panel using a bamboo drawer liner I found at Walmart. It works good. All my base scenery was built using plaster cloth over crumpled up newspaper. I then inserted some rubber mold castings for rock surfaces. Modeling worn and rustic structures and super detailing are a couple of my favorite activities. Let me show you some of the LBR's structures and scenery. Here, Shea number two is leaving the mill with the empty log cars to head back up the mountain to drop them off at Camp 2. The Carker's Sawmill and Planing Mill is the largest industry on the line. Daily loads of fresh cut timber are brought in by rail and the empty log cars are then delivered back up to the logging camps for the next day's load. The mill provides lumber products to the local communities as they expand. It features a sawmill, a planing mill, a kiln, and steam room to power the equipment. The LBR also serves a few other businesses like the old original sawmill. It's seen better days and business is in a slump since the big mill was built. Inside you can find the crew killing time waiting for the next order. The mill's office also looks like it could use some repair. There is also a small dedicated sawmill for making rail ties for expansion of the line. I wish that guy would close the door when he's in the outhouse. There are two small settlements on the LBR. The lower industrial basin and rail yard has some local companies servicing and providing a customer base for the mill and the upper town serves the loggers' needs. The lower town has a variety of businesses, including the local lumber yard, a vehicle repair shop owned by the legendary defunct brothers. Mr. Gott has the gas station. Here is the locomotive servicing area and engine house in lower town. Here we see the gas station on the way up to the mill. Gas here sells for 18 cents a gallon. Oh, for the good old days, eh? And then there's Lucy Goosey's Bar and Flop House. She calls it Lucy Goosey's Fork and Pour. 
This house of ill repute has rooms to rent upstairs and the local watering hole downstairs. I had a lot of fun modeling a complete interior both upstairs and down. You can see the oil lamp in the front bedroom. And I see the girls are working tonight in the back bedroom. Here's a look at what's inside the bar area. Gotta forgive the lousy quality of these images. But when I took them, it was on an old phone and I didn't know I'd be showing them to anyone. It's hard to see it all through the windows, but just knowing what's in there makes me happy. The Decker Tar Soap Company uses extractive resins from the mill to make various soap products to be shipped to the interchange and on to the cities. Here the owner is talking up a deal with one of his customers. The building could use some repair work, but it is still a sound structure and is one of the most profitable businesses served by the Little Beaver. The J.A. Evans Woodworks is my brother John's business making custom furniture. They are known across Canada for creating high quality fine furniture and other wood crafted products. Here a customer is picking up a new armoire and matching chairs. They're discussing the best way to load his pickup. The mill, Decker Soap and J.A. Evans Woodworks are all Foss scale model wood craftsman kits. I love these kits. They're very complete with great instructions and I have quite a few of them. The LBR also serves a small locally owned mine just off the main line going up the mountain. You can see a new shift of miners ready to go down the shaft for another day's work. The mine is a Banta models kit and has a complete interior as well. The Lower Towns Coal Distributor receives coal by rail from the mine. It has hopper unloading facilities and sells to the locals. Here a wagon load of coal is on the scale being weighed out. The wagon and horses are Berkshire model kits. The coal yard and tractor are by Woodland Scenics. Here's the coal distributor in Upper Town. It uses the conveyor and lots of manpower to load the customer's vehicles. Next to it is the Carter Supply Company. Note the dog on the shipping deck watching his owner trying to lift that heavy box of parts. Although it mainly supplies the mine, it also carries pretty much everything the townsfolk need. Most of my vehicles are Jordan miniature kits and fit the era. I miss them not being available any longer. They're a challenge to build, but worth the effort. Across the road is Rollins Welding. They have plenty of work serving the railroad, the mine, and numerous other small businesses in town. It's a nice day, so the welder is working outdoors. It supplies other companies like the Mooney Plumbing Supply. Plumbing is new to these parts, and I see they're shipping someone a new sink today. Here on Main Street, we have Rocky's Corner Bar next to the doctor's office. The local drunk is trying to have a sensible conversation with the doctor. <laughs> Good luck, Doc. Around the corner is the gunsmith, providing hunting supplies for the local population. Sam's Bar is also a busy place. I see the owners standing in the screen doors, making sure a couple of drunks he just kicked out don't try to drive home. Here we have the locomotive and rolling stock maintenance shed. It also provides shelter for the locomotives that have to stay overnight. There are several stations and freight sheds along the line. I see one of the locals taking a nap waiting for the 515. Here are a few of the other stations. This is camp number two. The McGifford log loader is ready to start the day's loading work. The log cars roll underneath the McGifford. As one car is loaded, the next one is pulled from underneath and into position under the boom. This is camp number one. It has a Barnhart log loader to hoist the logs onto the log cars. 
No logging layout would be complete without a trestle bridge. I scratch built mine so I could fit it exactly to the elevation and curvature of the track. Note the little waterfall behind it. I created it using Woodland Scenic's water effects. The truss bridge behind the trestle is also scratch built. Other details worth a mention are this excellent little hand car on its own siding near the interchange station. It's a Durango press kit. Wildlife abounds as well. The locals call this moose Bullwinkle. He's down at the pond every night for an evening snack. There are birds in the trees, deer in the forest, and an old bear somewhere nearby. Other fun details include this broken window in the engine house. I created it by drilling a pinhole in the acetate. Then, using my number 11 blade, I placed the tip of the hole and scratched outwards in all directions. Then I removed a few wedges to complete the broken window illusion. It's all good fun. Thanks for taking the tour of my Little Beaver Railroad. It definitely is a work in progress and hopefully will never be done. New projects, more scenery detailing, more of everything will keep me busy for many years to come. If you want to see more, you can visit my website at www.littlebeaverrailroad.com. I see the last passenger train for the night is ready to leave the station and heading for the interchange at the end of the tunnel. So we gotta go. Thanks for watching.